How you doing everybody? It's Mr. Doodle Math here and today we're going to look at some more proofs. Yay. Today we are looking at overlapping triangles. We're proving overlapping triangles can grow. Alright? So, to start off, let's look at this example here. Alright? So we have this triangle, we have this figure here, D, E, C, A, B, okay? Now the thing about overlapping triangles is this. This is what I would advise you all to do. Look at it like this. If I have these two pictures, these, these two objects overlapping, what's the best way to see both of them? How can I see both of them? What should I do? Separate. Separate, Separate them, right? So, with overlapping triangles, the best thing to do is to separate the two, all right? So, you would redraw the first triangle, that's going to be A, B, D, and then redraw the second triangle, which will be, what's that? A, B, C, right? So now we see both of our triangles. We good with that? Go ahead now if you agree. All right, so the next thing you want to do is look at what's given. And I always say mark what's given, right? So, the first given is segment D, B is congruent to segment AC. D, B is congruent to AC. AC, rang too hard. Alright, they also said that AD, AD, is congruent to BC. Everybody see that? Yes, yeah, sure. C. Yeah, yeah. And so now we have to prove that, we have to prove that angle D and angle C are congruent. Okay? So, once we've separated the triangles, the next thing you want to do is find out if you can, if, if you can see any reflection. Because the thing is, if something's overlapping, that means that these triangles, are, this figure is sharing something. So now what we want to do is identify what's being shared. Okay? So look at this. What does it look like is being shared here? A, B. Talk to me now. This bottom part, A, B is being shared, right? So A, B is being shared. Okay, so let's let's fit let's finish this one. So it says this was given, right? DB and AC was given. They also gave us AD being congruent to BC. That was given as well. From our picture, we saw that AB and AB are congruent, right? AB is going to be congruent to AB of the other triangle. Why? Because it is it's a reflection reflexive property, right? Alright, now we have three congruent parts. Therefore we can conclude that these triangles are congruent. Why the triangles congruent? Because of the side, side, side posture. Okay? Simple enough. We good with that so far? Now what we're we trying to prove? We're trying to prove that angle D and angle C are congruent. Angle D is now going to be congruent to angle C because C, P, C, P, C. because the corresponding parts <coughs> of congruent triangles are congruent. Very good. Right. So that's it in a nutshell. So with overlapping triangles, what you want to do is first separate. Separate the triangles, right? The second thing you want to do is um, identify what's given. Identify the G's, right? Identify what's given. The third thing you want to do is uh, you want to identify what's shared, the reflexive property. Identify reflexive property. Identify reflexive property. What's being shared? In this case, it was A, B, and A, B. Um, and then from there, you have your congruent triangles. Now you got your congruent triangles, and then you can go to C, P, C, T, C. Alright, but first things first, separate the triangles, identify what's given, then you want to identify the reflection. There's going to be, they have to share something because they're on top of each other. They're sharing something. Okay? And then we can finish that out. So let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. Alright, here we go. All right, so we got this situation here. Uh, uh, help me label this triangle. This is what? 
C. C. This is what? A. A. This is what? D. D. This is what? Nothing. 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 What is this? E. And B. B. All right. What's given? A C is congruent to A B. A C is first. Oh, first thing we need to do is what? Separate. Separate. Let's separate the triangles. So we got this triangle here. So that's gonna be what's that? D B A. Yeah. And then we have this triangle here. All right, uh, 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 that's C-E-A, C-E-A, we get with that, we've separated. All right, first thing, all right, next, number two, <laughs> identify what's given. A-C is congruent to A-B. A-C, which is right here, is congruent to A-B, all right? You mark what's congruent. All right, boy, you, you present? Sure, yes, sir. The next thing you want to do, the next given is AE is congruent to AD. AE, womp womp, AD, womp womp. Okay? That's given. Alright? So we've identified all our givens. Next we want to identify what's reflexive. So take a moment to see what is the same in both of these triangles. Which part does both of these triangles share? Tell your shoulder partner. Which part does both share? Let's look at this. What parts do both triangles share? All right, someone raise your hand and tell me what you think both triangles share. You may want to refer to the original picture, or you can look at both of these pictures. Yes. Angle A, did everybody see that? Yeah. Both triangles share angle A. There's angle A there, there's angle A Whoa. there. Yeah. Angle B. Huh? Never mind. Yeah. All right, so angle A is the same in both triangles, right? So angle A is going to be congruent to angle A. Why? Because it's a reflection, right? Reflexive property. Reflexive property, right. Now, we have one, two, three parts of congruency. We have three congruencies. Let's mark the congruent part. Now, can we, do we have enough to say that these triangles are congruent? Yes. No? Yes? No? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's, let's do it. So let's say triangle, let's do B, D, A is congruent to triangle C, E, A. Why? Side angle side. Very good. Side, angle, side, postulate. Right? Now, we needed to prove that CE and BD are congruent. Alright? Can we, can we go straight there now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now we can say, because the triangles are the same, they're congruent. That means this is congruent to that, this is congruent to that, they're not right angles, and this is congruent to that. Right? So now, the last part was, why is CE congruent to BD. Well, since the triangles are the same, they're congruent because of C, P, C, D, C. There you go. That's it. That is it. Let's see if we have a harder one. Is that hard? All right. All right. So, for this particular example here, this next example, um, we can look at the fact that we have something repeating. What's repeating in this particular picture? Go all the way back to the, the previous chapter. Well, no, 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 no. Look at what's given. Look at, look at the given first. We got this figure here. Say it again. It's a bunch of midpoints. Very good. There's a bunch of midpoints. Let's label this. This is F, this is G, this is what? H. H, this is what? J. What's this? A. And what's this? A. M. And is there anything else? No. No. All right. So you got two midpoints. Whenever you have a repeated, like if you got a repeated midpoint, a repeat bisect, or a repeat trisect, what does that mean? What, what property or theorem are we looking at? Which one is it? Think about it. 
when you got two midpoints, so you got two bisects, so you got two trisects. Multiplication. What, multiplication or division. division. Exactly. Very good. All right. So keep that in mind. Keep that in your back pocket. All right. So the first thing we want to do is let's identify the triangles. All right. So what two triangles do we have here? So we got this triangle here. That's going to be G, H, K. And then we got this triangle here. K, J, H. Okay? Let's look at what's given. Uh-oh. Let's give it. F, H is congruent to M, J. It's G. Let's mark it. F, H and M, J is congruent, right? You sure? So these are congruent. That's this long side and this long side. Right? Then they told us that G is the midpoint. It's the midpoint of FH. Okay? Yeah. Now you can say that FG is congruent to GH. You sure can. You can say FG and GH are congruent, right? Okay. So FG and but but let's let's write out both midpoints. Oh yeah, first. so you can see the okay. same one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but you see something, right? Yeah. So you see that this is congruent to that, right? Let's look at the next one. It says that K is the midpoint of MJ. Okay? That's given. Okay? That means this is that means that these are congruent. Now originally they said FH and MJ are congruent. And so if these are the midpoints, what can you what can you say is congruent about these two triangles then? Talk to me. No, 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 no. Just the, these sides. Can you identify congruent sides yet? No. no? Look, it says GH is congruent to FG. MK is congruent to KJ. This side is congruent to this side. So then what can you say about GH and KJ? They're congruent. Thank you. So you can say GH is congruent to... KJ, why? Did you multiply? Division. Division, right. You just divided. Division property, right? All right, so we got that. That's the first congruent part. All right, then they just told us GHJ, angle GHJ is congruent to angle KJH. GH, GH who? Jay, I must have marked something wrong here. Did I? Yeah, the K. This K? Yeah. G, H, J, and K, K, J, H. Oh, okay. So then the triangle is different. Oh, okay, okay. I drew the triangle wrong. This is a J instead of a K. Okay. Uh -huh. So it's this triangle and this triangle. Okay. Yes. Okay. This is congruent. That's given. Right? Now, where is that? GHJ and KJH. One, one. All right? Now, so that's all I give us, right? That was all I give us. So now, what is identified and reflects of what's in both of those triangles that's the same? A bow tie. It's a bow tie in both of the triangles? HJ. No, like, they, they're all reflections. Say it again, Miss Scott. HJ. HJ. You got HJ here? And you got HJ there. That's reflexive. Yeah, HJ and HJ. Why is it reflexive property? It's reflexive. Mean, right, reflexive property. Reflexive property. Now, we have all our triangles, right? We have everything. One, two, three. So the triangles are congruent now. That's part of the four. Triangles are congruent. Why? Side, side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Okay? So then finally you can say that GJ is congruent to HK for K. Right. That's all overlapping triangles is about. Alright? So now we've covered like we've covered <laughs> overlapping triangles. Alright? These are your steps. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe below. Mr. Do the Math out. Yeah. Shoot. You did.